The timeline of the Portal universe is full of tragic events that struck the people unfortunate enough to have been trapped within the Aperture Science Facility. Over these years, there was a person that almost made it to Aperture, and like some of the other test subjects, would have had to have fought against murderous artificial intelligence systems and solved the complex tests inside. We all know of Chell, the rogue test subject who took down GLaDOS. This is not that story. This is the story of someone who almost went through similar battles, but was cut during the development of Portal 2. Who was this person? What did she overcome? And most importantly, what legacy did she leave? Here, we explore the lore and story behind the cut character of Mel in the Portal series. On an unknown date during the early 2000s, a test subject woke up inside of the Aperture Science Facility and followed what appeared to be pre-recorded instructions from the speaker system. Over the following hours, the subject, Chell, solved many test chambers with the Aperture Science handheld portal device, evaded the deadly bullets of the sentry turrets, discovered the secret dens that had been created by another victim of Aperture, and eventually, she fought with a murderous AI in her central AI chamber. Due to her strength and tenacity, Chell survived an unfair situation and escaped to the world above to discover what had happened in her absence. Aperture had once been one of the leading science facilities on the planet before its fall, but it still had many dark secrets and stories to be uncovered. One of these occurred 20 years before, when a different test subject, Mel, began her testing cycle. In this earlier era of Aperture, the company developed sophisticated and advanced technology under the instructions of their CEO, Cave Johnson. He simply said what he wanted to invent and his science team got to work to make it a reality. This was a completely different Aperture Science to the one Chell had encountered. This was a time before Portals or GLaDOS. One day, Mel woke up on a small tropical island. It had a dock, tables and a hammock between two palm trees to enjoy the hot weather and stunning blue ocean that spanned as far as the eyes could see. This calming place was all hers, however, something was off. Her blonde hair was tied back and she wore a light blue jumpsuit with Aperture's logo on it. Curious about her relaxing environment, Mel made her way to the dock and it was here she realised that not everything was as it seemed. As she got closer to the water, a hidden sensor detected her movement and released a hidden, transparent panel from the sand. In response to this, Mel moved into a different direction, but another panel popped up. She continued to move into multiple directions until these panels formed a box around her. From inside, she watched her island paradise transform as furniture and palm trees were pulled into the ground. The water drained, and the stunning blue sky projection was turned off. Then, her transparent cage was moved along a rail into a test chamber. Following this confusing moment, Mel used one of Aperture's top secret pieces of technology, F-Stop, and other equipment to solve the test chambers. On her traversal of the chambers, Mel heard the voice and instructions of Aperture's CEO, the Southern billionaire, Cave Johnson. Behind the scenes, Aperture had broken countless health and safety regulations, but they still attempted to appear as if they followed them. To do this, they developed a robot to explain the legal and ethical rules of each chamber. Her official name was the Gyroscopic Liability Absolver and Disk Operating System, GLaDOS to be short, but to Kay, she went by the name of Betty. Each time Cave explained a chamber, Betty, the rolling lampshade with a personality core for a head, rattled off the relevant legal and liability clauses. On her path through the testing cycle, Mel discovered and spoke with the many robots of Aperture that worked behind the scenes and kept the facility running. Surprisingly, these robots were pretty much sentient and disliked the way Cave Johnson treated them. 
Mel eventually agreed to help the robots in their uprising against the evil CEO of Aperture as she fought her way through advanced transforming environments. As of now, it is unknown how this story would have ended or if it even had an end. So why was this storyline cut? This version of the game was called F-Stop Portal. As this was set in the 1980s, 20 years before Portal 1, Valve had to remove Portals and GLaDOS. In their place, they had to create a new story, a new antagonist, and a new interesting method to solve Aperture's test chambers. We know this method went by the name of F-Stop, and still, even now, Valve are super secretive about what this element of the game actually was. From what we can tell, it would have been along the lines of taking pictures in the game, and then using these images to create in-game objects to solve the chambers. The team felt great about this concept of Mel as the new protagonist and her involvement in a robot uprising. Unfortunately, when the team were given feedback, they were told it was a lot of things, but it wasn't Portal 2. And as a result, this is where this version of Mel's story was cut. In another attempt to portray Mel as the protagonist of Portal 2, deep underground in the Aperture Science long-term relaxation vault in the future, Mel woke up and looked at herself in the mirror on the wall. She did not know how long she had been asleep for, but a lot had happened during her long sleep. Unknown to her, Aperture had fallen twice. The first time had been after GLaDOS had taken over the facility with Neurotoxin, and the second occurred as a result of Chell's fight with the murderous AI and subsequent escape from the facility. As Mel explored Aperture, she saw how nature had begun to take back the facility. It had been a while. On her path, she made use of a portal gun and used it to help her get past obstacles in the hopes she could find an exit. Unfortunately, Mel came up against the remains of GLaDOS and accidentally reactivated her. As a result of this activation, GLaDOS placed Mel onto a new testing track to test the portal gun. Not a lot more is known about this version of Mel as the protagonist of Portal 2. The story of a new test subject in Aperture, unaware of anything, once again had great potential. Sadly, the playtesters were disappointed that when they eventually met GLaDOS again after all of this time, she did not recognize them. GLaDOS knew them as Chell, not Mel. During the events of Portal 1, the game not only focused on the completion of the test chambers, but also the tumultuous relationship between Chell and GLaDOS. This in turn had formed a bond between the player and the robot, which led to the disappointment when GLaDOS did not recognize or even reference that they had killed her in the previous game. Due to this, Mel was removed completely as the main protagonist of the story, and the ending of Portal 1 was retconned to allow Chell to return as the protagonist of Portal 2. Despite multiple failures to implement Mel into the Portal 2 storyline, Valve tried one last time. In this version, Mel once again found herself as a test subject at the Aperture Science facility. However, this time, she did not test alone. She had a partner, Chell. Together, the duo helped each other complete the test chambers created by GLaDOS, who spoke to them through the speaker system. Regardless of whatever bond they formed, GLaDOS attempted to manipulate and turn them against each other. Although on paper, this combination would have appeared to have worked, the issue this time came from the playtesters. When Valve showed the game to the group, they struggled with the chambers and hesitated when they came to regions that resulted in death. This hesitation then seemed to get in the way of actually progressing in the game. It is one thing when you die in single player and then respawn, but it is different when you rely on another person to complete the test. Therefore, Valve cut Mel for the final time and replaced both Mel and Chell with two robots that could be quickly rebuilt after destruction, Atlas and Peabody. A great, lore-friendly feature for the game. 
involves multiple failed attempts to implement Mel into the timeline of Portal left her as a cut protagonist. Then in 2015, four years after the release of Portal 2, Prism Game Studios did what Valve could not. They saw the vast potential of the character of Mel and created a new story for her. While not an official release by Valve, the Portal community, for the most part, considered this game as canon in the timeline. This is because it does not break continuity of the official games in the series, it fits perfectly well into the story, and most importantly, enriches the entire Portal timeline with the addition. In their interpretation of Mel, Prism Game Studios changed her hair colour from blonde to brunette, and gave her a brown aperture jumpsuit instead of a blue one. To fit into the timeline, they started this new story back in the 1950s, a time we know a little about, but not a ton. In the year 1952, Aperture Science sought out only the best and brightest test subjects to participate in their experiments. The three Cave Johnson often cited as the best candidates were astronauts, Olympians and war heroes, and on one of Aperture's trams was their newest test subjects, Mel. This subject had participated in the 1936 Nuremberg Olympics and had just missed out on a silver medal. Despite this, she was still seen as an Olympian hero. Mel had been selected to test the short-term relaxation innovator's vault in the temporary offices. Her participation in this was fairly simple. She was told that all she had to do was fall asleep in one of these vaults, and then one of the science team would wake her up between a couple of minutes to an hour later. Mel of course followed her instructions and fell into a deep slumber in the short term relaxation vault, but neither the machine or aperture personnel woke her up. Inside, Mel slept through many decades as aperture rose high and fell low. She slept through the creation of GLaDOS, the neurotoxin-related purge of the facility, the fall of GLaDOS at Chell's hands, and the subsequent fall of Earth to the Combine Empire. Eventually, Mel woke up and left the machine. Here, she was greeted by the voice of a personality call, Virgil, who at first pretended to be the voice of Cave Johnson in an attempt not to panic her. He had activated her vault to wake her, and he needed her to be calm. A lot of time had passed, and a lot had happened. At first, Virgil explained away the fall of the facility to earthquakes as he guided her through aperture with the help of a portal gun. Mel was his only chance of escape and in return, he was hers. After Virgil came clean and explained the reality of Aperture, he led Mel towards his physical core so that she could carry him out of the facility with her. However, they came into a little trouble when the Aperture employee guardian and intrusion system, Aegis, detected their movement. This system knew what GLaDOS had done to the facility and was aware of how dangerous she could be if she was ever reactivated. So, it began to flood regions of the facility with goo in the hopes it could destroy her completely. Unfortunately, the detection of Mel and Virgil distracted it. Over the following hours, Aegis flooded the regions it believed these intruders to be with dangerous goo. The machine was only doing its job and wanted to protect Aperture and its employees from further danger, but Virgil determined that the only way he and Mel would be able to escape alive was if they shut Aegis down. Through instructions from Virgil, problem solving skills, and the ability to evade the dangers Aegis put in their way, Mel arrived in Aegis' chamber, fought its defences, and shut it down. This action saved the enrichment center from the goo, and as a result, stopped the destruction of GLaDOS. On a positive note, Aegis did manage to send through a final action before it powered down completely. It woke up a test subject in long-term relaxation. Without the dangers and interference of Aegis, Virgil called an elevator for Mel to leave. Without the need of her portal gun, Mel incinerated the device and entered her lift to freedom. 
Virgil and Mel had been through so much together in such a short amount of time, but although he had activated her short-term relaxation vault so that she could help him escape, he ultimately ended up staying in Aperture as Mel rode the elevator to the surface. On her way up, Mel saw just how far the facility had fallen since she had arrived countless years before. Then, as the doors opened to the surface, she discovered that not only Aperture had fallen, but so had the planet. Buildings had collapsed and plant life had taken over. Something terrible had happened, and without Virgil, she was alone. After this moment, her story and fate is unknown. Many versions of Mel with different stories were created during the development of Portal 2, but were eventually cut. Despite the fact that Mel never made it into an official Valve Portal game, her legacy and potential resulted in something great, Portal Stories Mel, in my opinion, the best Portal fan game created. The game is not official canon to the Portal series, but it is as close to a Portal 3 as we are ever going to get. The game feels like a Portal game, the humour is there, and it fits perfectly into the Portal timeline. For a cut protagonist that existed for such a short amount of time in Portal 2's development, Mel became an icon in the Portal community. This is why we love Valve games. Each character, big or small, has the potential to become something incredible when the fandom gets their hands on it. With the introduction of the multiverse in the Portal 2 DLC, the Perpetual Testing Initiative, the multiverse theory means that anything that can exist has or will happen just in another universe. Therefore, while Mel's journey did not happen in the main universe, it did in another, every version of them. So, she did fight against Cave Johnson during the Aperture Robot Uprising. In another, she took down GLaDOS after Chell had escaped the facility. She completed test chambers for GLaDOS with the help of Chell and even escaped Aperture during Aegis's attempts to take her down. As of now, the fate of Mel from Portal Stories Mel is unknown. The world had changed a lot in her absence. Hopefully, she will meet some comforting faces on her path that can fill her in on what had happened. This is very different to the types of videos I normally make. Typically, I take a look at canon topics, beta content, timelines, and ARGs. However, Mel is incredibly important to the Portal community and genuinely did leave a huge legacy and impact. Although not made by Valve, I like to think that Portal Stories Mel actually happened in the timeline. That is my headcanon anyway. Valve have also stated, in so many words, that canonicity does not exist, and it is up to the player what they deem to be canon. It is interesting to see what could have been in the Portal series. Even now, I am hopeful for another Portal game, but I know how unlikely it is. With all of their properties and how vast their universes are, Valve are sitting on a goldmine of stories they could tell. Aperture runs deep and there are still a ton of characters, events and eras to explore. Doug Ratman's awful experience in Aperture, the creation of the Borealis and what happened to the science team on board when it disappeared. Maybe the experience of a scientist forced to test by GLaDOS during the purge of the facility. Tests that even we do not know about yet with advanced technology. Those are just a few that came to my head. There are so many. Ultimately, Mel's story has been told pretty perfectly through Portal Stories Mel. I am happy for that to be her story. For those who have not played it, there is a link to the game in the description, or you could just search for it on Steam. It is also free. You know the drill by now, if you enjoyed this video, hit that big red button. Like, share, dislike, comment on your thoughts on what you liked or disliked. I'd finally like to thank my gold tier patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, ChickenGuy791, Ruben Mendoza, Mosflit, Duke, Toadnut, Oren X, Azu, Karatana, AJ, Verona, Comfy, and BG Games. 
which storyline of Mel's did you like the best? If we ever do get a Portal 3, would you like to see a whole new story for her or are you happy with the story by Prism Games? And what would you like me to cover next? This is where our story ends. Check back next week for a new one.